Hello everyone and welcome back to No Plan. Today we have a little bit of an interesting video here, maybe unexpected. I've got this game, Minnesota Cuke, right here that a friend of mine has been wanting to play for a while. Now, the problem with it is this is a Windows XP game, and, well, Windows XP is pretty old. However, there's actually a way to get it installed legitimately. Like, you're not emulating it, you're actually installing the ISO from Microsoft, or really it's from the Internet Archive, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Alright, so we're at our laptop now, and in order to get the Windows XP ISO, you just gotta go to the Internet Archive. You can download it right here, it's the SP3 pack, and you wanna give it a little bit to download, it's only like 4 gigs, but their servers are a little slow, so you gotta give it a minute. Now while that's downloading, we can get the second tool, which is when set up from USB. Now you can't just use like a Blana Etcher or some sort of ISO to USB type program like you're used to. You've got to get this one because the Windows XP is, it's a little finicky, it's, I can't exactly explain why it's different, but it is. Now the website does occasionally go down a bit, so if you ever go to it and it's just not working, let us know down in the comments and we'll put a download link so you can get it from us instead of them since they're kind of unreliable. So now that we've got it downloaded, We'll extract the Win setup from USB. Now that this is extracted, it'll open up this folder. We can go ahead and double click it. And then we'll extract. So I know we're two folders in, which is a little confusing, but now we can boot up the 64 bit version of the Win setup from USB. All right, so we've got Win setup from USB installed and it's already found our Kingston data traveler. Now, something we need to do with the ISO we downloaded from the Internet Archive is open it. Go to Downloads. I've already put it in a folder called Windows XP. And we'll just double click on it and it'll ask us if we want to run it, which we'll hit Open, and this will come up. And also, if you'll notice, if we hit this PC, it's mounted like a DVD drive. So now in Win32, we can select that we want to install Windows XP, hit the three dots, and select this DVD drive. It's going to ask us EULA, hit I accept, and we just hit go. So it's asking what name it wants it to be, which is Windows XP Professional SP3.1, and we'll let that go. Now, while this is downloading, there's an extra step that is not necessarily required, but it will greatly improve your XP experience, and that is to get the drivers. Because Windows XP, it's not going to have all the drivers and you don't want to connect it to the internet. To do this, simply go to the site sditool.org. You can also look up SDI Rust to find it. Essentially what this site is, is a massive driver pack. In fact, it's 41 gigabytes worth of drivers for almost every Windows version. Now, I downloaded this onto this drive right here. It's this right here, 41 gigabytes, and you'll notice these two applications. And we're not gonna do anything right here. Once you download it, all you'll have to do is actually start these applications once we're in XP, and it'll automatically install all the drivers you need because when I installed Windows XP the first time, I didn't have any audio drivers and I was missing a couple of video drivers, but this was able to get them. I can't make my lip quiver. All right, so our drive is done, so we just hit Enter, and hopefully it doesn't do it again. But now, you'll see it's called Grimty Vol, and we're gonna go ahead and eject the USB that has XP on it, and this drive that has all our drivers on it, and let's go ahead and get Windows XP installed on our laptop. Alrighty, so I've got my USB here. Let's go ahead and start the computer. We're gonna go to F12, to the boot manager, USB memory, enter. Alrighty, we wanna set Windows XP setup, hit enter. And we want to do the first part of Windows XP Professional. So now what we can do is just hit enter right here. Now, if you run in and you don't see any drives listed, go into the BIOS and do this. All right, so we want to go over to, if I'm recalling, Advanced and the SATA controller mode. It's currently set on AHCI. We want to set this to compatibility. It's going to be a little different on each computer. Maybe it's called RAID in your case. We're going to hit F10. We're going to hit Enter. And then we're going to go hit F12 again and boot back into the USB. Girl, are you Windows XP? <laughs> now we'll hit Enter. And see, this now appears. So this is our drive. It's 256 gigabytes roughly. 
This is the USB. Notice how it's called grip, volume, whatever. So we want to make sure we select the top one, not the bottom. Yeah, read this. Delete the partition and then go select the unpartitioned place. So we got to go up here. We got to hit D, which is delete the partition. And we're making sure that is indeed the partition unknown E drive, which is not our USB because you don't want to delete the USB. We're going to hit L, delete. And now it's unpartitioned space. We hit enter. And we want to go ahead and format the partition with the NTFS file system. I'm going to select the quick version. And now it's formatting our drive and getting it ready to put on Windows XP. Oh, Man, my great. desk is all nasty and stuff. I gotta clean it with my Roomba. Oh wait, never mind. Maybe it'll do it internally. Isn't this freaking awesome? Like the old school, non-emulated, actually running Windows XP? This is pretty cool. Guys, it's sleek lines, clean, sleek look, clean lines, and appealing colors with a task-oriented design. Linux could never. Now we get to set up Windows XP, which you can literally just hit next. Um, oh yeah, we gotta put a name. Now here, what you want to do is navigate back to the Internet Archive site and put in the code which they have listed there. We can also throw it on the screen or put it in the description. Video! Did you miss that? Thank you for purchasing Microsoft XP. Yes, Microsoft. I purchased this with a complete and legitimate copy. And look, we're into Windows XP as bacon. Now as you noticed, there was no audio. And there's like, you don't have the audio controls even. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and unplug this drive, which I know it had like SP1 and SP2 on it. I mean, I thought it was gonna ask me for the second one, but I guess not. You might wanna experiment with that yourself because I don't want to. But we're gonna get my drive with the SDI Rust software on it and we're gonna get our drivers installed. And because this is older, we have to go into the search bar, my computer. Here, Seagate external, there we go. We're gonna boot up SDI Rust and CSDI R whatever this is. We're gonna go ahead and start this up. Snappy drive installer. We're gonna make sure that we unblock it. And yeah, see it's already pulling in everything. We wanna go ahead and select all at the top and install all 30 drivers. And we're gonna let this go. And this is gonna get our Windows XP updated to where we can have audio and everything else we need. I feel like, ah, oh, ah, oh, hear that? It's making noise. Can I turn it out? That's freaking awesome. Okay, it is installing uh, Wi-Fi drivers, which is a little spooky. Yeah, system restart required. But dude, we have audio now, so we're just gonna give this a few more minutes and they'll all be installed. This software is really awesome. And yes, there might be a way to like download the light version so it's not as big, but I mean, if you've got the space, I would download the 41 gigabyte version because that basically has all the drivers you need. And if you're messing around with a lot of stuff like this, I think it'd be worthwhile to have. Alrighty, so as a little disclaimer, I'm a bit rusty. Now, the trackpad was previously working, but now it's not. It says that the Synaptix touchpad driver is installed, so upon this restart, it may work. However, you may need to go back with the bootable drive right here and install the one of the other options that was listed. I thought it was the first option, then you go to the second option, that's how I remember it working, but there's not much documentation online, so I'm pretty much blindly sailing while I'm installing this. However, once you've got it on the USB, it's pretty much just selecting the right option and you really can't hurt anything from there. Same thing with the SDI Rust, which, okay, Windows didn't start normally, whatever. Again, didn't have these issues while I tested it, but now suddenly this, this, this computer is all being funky. Once it starts up, we're gonna test out one of the old classics, pinball, and of course, get to trying out Minnesota Cuke. At this point, I probably need to reinstall it, but uh, I don't want to. So now, what we're gonna do is type in, cancel, and we're gonna do Oh yeah, I forgot. If you search up things in the search bar, it tries to search the internet. We can't do it like that. We have to go to all programs, 
games, and pinball. Now, I don't remember the controls exactly, but this is 3D pinball running on Windows XP legitimately. Oh, it's 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 Z it's Z and. I'm not very good at it. We should try Minnesota Cube. We're gonna cut over to a video of our friend trying it because he's wanted to play this for quite a while. He played it as a kid and he actually bought a copy because he lost the original off eBay, uh, but then he lost that copy so he had to buy another copy and that's the one we have right here. And so uh, let's go ahead and cut over to, to him. So unfortunately the video clip of him playing was corrupted, but it was having a strange issue where Minnesota Cuke was completely bugged out. Like it looked like the, everything was dragging across each other. It was like a weird graphical driver issue, but the trackpad was working, which goes to show you that this install, while easy, can be a little funky and produce some funky issues. Yes. Hey, it works. Wait, it's working now? So I lost the mouse, but now this is working. That's so weird. Okay, so the other clip was a little weird where it wasn't working, but the you know mouse driver was working. And so there's some finickiness with installing Windows XP, but it's Windows XP, you know, it's, it's gonna be a little buggy. It hasn't been supported in years, but it's actually not as difficult to install it as one would think. Thank you for watching No Plan, and we'll catch you on the next video.